Hi, future teacher, and welcome to our full-length pre-K through four practice test covering module two for people who want to become a licensed teacher in the state of Pennsylvania. This video is proudly presented by teacherpreps.com, the number one choice for test prep to pass your teacher certification exam. If you're watching this video, you have probably just completed our full-length pre-K through four module two practice test and are looking to gain deeper insight into each correct answer. If you haven't yet taken the practice test, we do not recommend that you watch this video for inadvertent exposure will spoil your chance to actually take the practice test and most importantly, check your readiness for exam day. If you haven't enrolled yet, navigate to teacherpreps.com and click on the blue button labeled Get Test Prep Now to get all the resources you need to pass in one place. Here we go. I'll read the questions you pause the video to revisit which answer option you selected, and then hit the play button to discover the most appropriate answer. Which of the following practices best supports the development of both expressive and receptive language skills in young learners? Reread the answer options and come back when you're ready. All right, great. Letter D is the most appropriate answer here, and that's because interactive read-alouds involve listening, which is the receptive language, and then also discussion, the expressive language. This fosters both skills simultaneously. Excellent job so far. Let's keep going. Here we go. A kindergarten teacher notices that some students struggle with blending sounds. Which of the following instructional strategies would most effectively address this challenge? The best answer for this question is letter C, since multisensory activities engage students in blending sounds through multiple senses. Great, next. Which of the following is the most effective way to create a print-rich environment in a pre-K classroom? The answer we're looking for here is letter A, where labeling objects around the room immerses students in print, helping them connect written words to their environment. Next. When selecting reading materials for a diverse pre-K for classroom, what should be the primary consideration? In this case, ensuring that materials are aligned with state learning standards is important for meeting educational objectives, so we'll select answer letter A. Next question, which activity best integrates language development with social studies instruction in a first grade classroom? For this answer, creating a storybook about a community helper integrates language development with social studies content, which comes from letter C. Okay, next, a teacher notices that a pre-K student enjoys drawing but rarely engages in verbal storytelling. Which activity would best support the student's emergent literacy development by building on their strengths? The correct answer here is letter A, and that's because encouraging the student to narrate their drawings helps bridge their visual skills with verbal storytelling, promoting literacy development. Which type of assessment is most appropriate for evaluating a student's progress in oral language development during a unit on storytelling? The most appropriate answer for this question comes from letter C, and that's because ongoing formative assessments allow the teacher to monitor and support the student's progress in oral language development throughout the unit. Great, next question. Which activity is most effective in promoting phonological awareness in kindergarten students? To answer this question, we have to remember that identifying rhyming words is a fundamental phonological awareness skill that helps students recognize sound patterns in language, and therefore the correct solution comes from letter B. All right, next question. A first grade teacher wants to help students develop phonemic awareness by focusing on the ability to manipulate phonemes. Which activity would be most effective? As mentioned in letter D, Having students play a word game where they change the first sound in a word to create a new word, also called phoneme substitution, is a form of demonstrating phonemic awareness. Next, which of the following activities best supports the development of letter sound correspondences in pre-K students? The correct answer comes from letter C, 
because singing a song that emphasizes letter sounds helps students associate letters with their corresponding phonemes in an engaging way. This question reads, when teaching second graders about consonant digraphs, which of the following examples would be most appropriate to use? Now, keep in mind that while taking your teacher certification exam, you will want to be prepared to answer questions not only about consonant digraphs, which are presented in this question, but also related topics such as consonant blends, diphthongs, and what an onset and rhyme is. For this question, the correct solution comes from letter B, since chat and ship contain letter combinations CH and SH, which are consonant digraphs. Great, moving on, a first grade teacher is introducing sight words that do not follow regular phonics rules. Which strategy would be most effective? The correct solution here is letter B, because repeated exposure through daily flashcard drills helps students memorize irregular sight words that do not follow standard phonetic rules. Which assessment tool would be most appropriate for a teacher to use when evaluating a kindergarten student's phonemic awareness? The most appropriate response here comes from letter D, since a checklist of phonemic awareness skills is a practical tool for assessing a student's ability to hear, identify, and manipulate phonemes. Which of the following best describes the relationship between reading fluency and reading comprehension? In this case, we'll go with letter A, because fluent readers can read quickly and accurately, which allows them to focus on understanding the meaning of the text rather than decoding each word. On to our next question. Which of the following strategies is most effective in enhancing vocabulary development and reading comprehension in young learners? The correct solution for this question comes from letter B, because using new vocabulary in different contexts reinforces understanding and aids in the retention of the words, which in turn supports comprehension. A third grade teacher wants to help students learn the meanings of unfamiliar words they encounter in reading. Which strategy would be most effective? The strategy that would be most effective is listed at letter A because context clues are used to infer word meanings, which help students independently learn and understand new vocabulary. Next question. A teacher notices that a student struggles with reading comprehension during silent reading but performs well when reading aloud. What might this indicate? The correct answer here is letter C as the student's better performance when reading aloud suggests that auditory reinforcement helps them process and understand the text. All right, our next question asks, which strategy is most effective for helping first grade students independently improve their reading comprehension? The correct answer is letter A teaching students to ask themselves questions about the text at various stages of reading helps them actively engage with and understand the material. All right, great. Up next, a teacher asks fourth grade students to compare and contrast the themes of two different stories, which cognitive skill is primarily being developed through this activity. The correct answer, B. Comparing and contrasting themes requires students to think critically about the content and underlying messages in the texts. Next up, what type of assessment would be most appropriate for measuring a second grade student's progress in reading fluency? The correct answer here is letter B, an oral reading fluency test that measures the number of words read correctly per minute is a direct and effective way to assess reading fluency. Our next question reads, which activity best supports the development of young children's understanding of the concept of community? The correct answer for this question comes from letter C, as role-playing community helper jobs allows children to actively engage with and understand the roles of different members of a community. Wonderful job, future teacher. Our next question asks, a first grade teacher plans a lesson on the concept of time and wants to ensure it is developmentally appropriate. Which activity would best accomplish this? 
The activity that would best accomplish this comes from letter B, because creating a timeline of their daily routine helps young students understand the concept of time in a concrete and relatable way. Is that what you got to? Fantastic. Let's keep this practice test moving. Which type of assessment would be most effective for evaluating students' understanding of the concept of democracy in a second grade classroom? The correct answer here is letter D. Creating classroom rules through voting allows students to experience and understand the democratic process firsthand. All right, next one. Which classroom activity would most effectively promote civic competence in first grade students? The correct answer here comes from letter B. Participating in a class election allows students to actively engage in a civic process, helping them develop an understanding of democratic principles. Great. Next question reads, a third grade teacher wants to teach students about physical and human characteristics of places. Which activity would best support this goal? We're going to select letter A for this question, and that's because creating maps of their neighborhoods helps students understand both the physical and human characteristics of places by relating them to their own experiences. Our next question reads, a teacher is planning a lesson on the American Revolution for fourth grade students. Which of the following activities would best help students understand the perspectives of both the colonists and the British? The best activity listed below comes from letter B. Writing letters from different perspectives encourages students to think critically about the viewpoints of both sides during the American Revolution. Moving on, a fourth grade teacher wants to teach students about the roles of the three branches of the U.S. government. Which of the following activities would be most effective? The correct answer here is letter C, as it provides the most direct and experiential learning opportunity, allowing students to live the roles and responsibilities of each government branch. You're doing great. Let's keep going. Which activity would best support the development of fine motor skills in a pre-K classroom? Answer option A. Drawing self-portraits requires fine motor control, would best support the development of fine motor skills in a pre-K classroom. This question asks, a kindergarten teacher plans a lesson on rhythm and music. Which activity would be most developmentally appropriate? The correct answer comes from letter B. Creating rhythms with percussion instruments allows young children to explore and understand rhythm in a hands-on, developmentally appropriate way. Which type of assessment would be most effective for evaluating a first grade student's understanding of basic dance movements? The correct answer solution comes from letter B, because a performance assessment allows the teacher to directly observe and evaluate the student's ability to perform the dance movements. Let's keep it going. Next question reads, which of the following is a basic element of visual art that pre-K students should learn? Because texture is a fundamental element of visual art and understanding it helps students describe and appreciate different types of surfaces in artwork. For this reason, we'll select option D. Next, which of the following activities would best promote a sense of civic responsibility in second grade students? The correct answer is letter D. Organizing a class project that involves community service helps students understand and take part in civic responsibility through direct action. New question. A third grade teacher wants to teach students about the concept of supply and demand. Which activity would best help students understand this concept? The correct answer is letter C. A classroom marketplace simulation allows students to experience supply and demand in action, helping them understand how it affects prices and availability. Next question. A kindergarten teacher plans to introduce the concept of buoyancy to her students. Which of the following activities would be most effective for helping students understand why some objects float while others sink? These answer options are fairly long. Pause the video, read it through D, and come back when you're ready. All right, let's talk about option B, because that's the best one I'm seeing. 
This choice not only involves hands-on testing, but also incorporates a personal connection with items students bring from home, enhancing engagement and providing a direct experience with buoyancy. Great, here we go. A second grade teacher plans to introduce the concept of the water cycle. Which activity would be most developmentally appropriate? The activity that would be most developmentally appropriate looks like option B, and that's because observing evaporation in a simple experiment helps students understand the water cycle in a way that is hands-on and appropriate for their developmental level. If you're still watching, you are well on your way to passing module two of your pre-K through for exam. Pause here to give yourself a pat on the back and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Let's read on. A third grade teacher wants to assess students' understanding of the scientific method. Which of the following assessment types would most effectively evaluate their grasp of the process? The best choice as it involves applying knowledge in a practical setting comes from option D, which not only tests students' understanding of the scientific method, but also their ability to execute it. Up next, a first grade class participates in a gardening project where each student plants a seed. The teacher provides tools like trowels and watering cans. The children's use of these tools is most likely to encourage their development of. The correct answer is letter C. Personal responsibility is crucial as students learn to care for their plant by watering and maintaining it regularly, reflecting the educational goal of nurturing growth through personal accountability. Actors in a school play are encouraged to use ad-libbing exercises too. The correct answer is letter C. Ad-libbing exercises help actors develop the ability to respond creatively to unexpected changes during performances, enhancing their improvisational skills. Moving on, a third grade teacher uses interactive digital storybooks about forest ecosystems to teach students about the food chain. This use of technology will most likely contribute to students' learning in which of the following ways? The correct answer is letter A. Interactive digital storybooks enhance memory retention by providing multisensory learning experiences that help students better remember information about complex concepts like food chains. Understanding that individual notes create different pitches would most likely help a beginner piano student develop an understanding of the relationship between individual piano keys and. The correct answer is letter D because recognizing different pitches helps students understand how individual keys relate to specific sound frequencies. A middle school teacher collects examples of each student's writing assignments throughout the year in digital portfolios. At the end of the year, the teacher can most effectively use the portfolios too. For your exam, Keep in mind that digital portfolios allow for effective tracking and evaluation of individual progress over time. For this reason, we'll select answer option A for this problem. Moving on to the next question, which of the following activities is most likely to develop elementary students' spatial reasoning skills? The correct answer here is option A, as drawing maps encourages students to think about spatial relationships and translate three-dimensional experiences into two-dimensional representations, enhancing their spatial reasoning. All right, our last question in this pre-K through four module two practice test reads, a child in a kindergarten classroom pretends to be a chef preparing a meal. The child arranges various plastic fruits and vegetables on plates. Which of the following teacher comments during this dramatic play would most effectively extend the child's learning? The best answer here is letter A. Asking about the types of dishes being prepared encourages the child to think creatively and explain their choices, deepening their engagement and understanding of the role play scenario. Well done with this practice test. Keep in mind that this is the first of our two module two practice tests. So if you haven't already, make sure you log into teacherpreps.com now to complete the second module two practice test to make sure you are fully prepared for exam day.